Hi, this video is about Zuckerberg telling the truth about AI and it being misinterpreted as coding is dead. I've seen coding is dead in thumbnails and titles for a lot of videos. Um, I've seen AI will replace coders in 2025 in quotes um, and AI will write most software soon in quotes. And neither one of those things did he say. And I want to cover what he actually said. He's one of the few people actually telling the truth about this. And so uh, let's 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 hear what he has to say, and then we'll we'll break it down. And I'll put a link that jumps directly to this uh, point in the video in the description below because most of the podcast is actually about like MMA and stuff like that, and and more kind of meta verse type stuff. General fear that we're going to become an obsolete is that human beings are essentially creating a superior version of higher intelligence that will be powered by quantum computing and connected to nuclear reactors. And it's gonna have like this ungodly ability to, well, first of all, they've already shown that uh, AI has learned to code. I mean, this is one of the things that OpenAI said. That they're, 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 oh yeah. yeah it's, they're learning how to yeah. code their own AI. Uh-huh, I think is, this year, Probably in 2025, we at Meta, as well as the other companies that are basically working on this, are going to have an AI that can effectively be a sort of mid-level engineer that you have at your company that can write code. Mm. And once you have that, then in the beginning, it'll be really expensive to run, and then you can get it to be more efficient. And then over time, we'll get to the point where a lot of the code in our apps and and including the AI that we generate is actually going to be built by AI engineers instead of people engineers. But, but I don't know. I, I think that that'll augment the people working on it. So I mean, my, my view on this is like the future, people are just going to be so much more creative and are going to be freed up to do kind of crazy. Okay. Then he goes on to expand on that. I'm not going to watch it because he goes on for probably another three or four minutes um, talking about like job elimination and expanding on, I think this will augment the people work, which seems to be missed in a lot of the kind of viral type clickbaity things that are out there. Um, and he, he talks about how we'll be just be able to create a lot more, we'll have a lot more leverage, and then he doesn't think people will become obsolete, which is a lot of the ways that people are trying to point to, to things. And I'm going to use kind of math and numbers and distributions and um, kind of trajectories over time and I'm going to show some some interesting graphs here right now to kind of explain a little bit more what he means and what uh, go into more detail of, of what what will actually happen and why that there's this really uh, incorrect mindset about what's going to happen like economically with uh, coding okay here is the first graph this is how most people are viewing coding and if we this this axis right here axis right here is software development value so whatever value let's say we had 2020 uh, it was basically all humans no ai um, that was creating the value in software development and so uh, people see that rightfully so the ai is going to add value into the software development process uh, and they assume that the total amount of value to be provided is the same and flat. And and therefore, and they see this trajectory and they and there's also a bit of a, let's call it a linear assumption that it's gonna keep going down in this direction, which is also a, a, a false assumption. Most likely what it will do is it will stabilize at some point, um, no matter how good the AI gets, where there will be some amount of human uh, value. But also the assumption that this is flat is just flat out incorrect. And part of what uh, Mark Zuckerberg is saying is it's gonna be more like this, where the total value of software development is going to increase both the human and obviously the AI, because it went from nothing. And, and so this is why, this is one of many uh, explanations from like a numerical standpoint, kind of like an economic standpoint of what the value will be provided and why we will still need and want really good coders and and that the the demand for them should actually increase there might be some amount of unsettling as like the roles and the specific tasks for which they do there's probably going to be some amount of shakeup of that to some degree uh but th this is more likely and he he emphasizes this point further on into into the conversation 
So th this is a very gr a fixed mindset type of thing. If you don't know the difference between fixed and growth mindset, look it up. It's really valuable. It's really important. And most people kind of think with fixed amount. But this is th the trajectory of the value that software has created in the world has just gone up and up and up. And all this does is add more of that. And it makes humans able to do more as well. This is much more likely scenario, no matter how big this be this chunk becomes, humans are able to add that much more value. Okay, so let's also look at the value of the coding skills kind of over time for AI versus human. And this is a very, very, very rough graph uh, that is completely inaccurate, but I think it gets kind of my point across. Uh, number one, there's not one single coding skill. There's a lot of different vectors of coding that um, where AI is going to be a lot better than humans. Uh, and is already better than humans. And then there's aspects of uh, coding that it'll be really hard for AI to, to do that anytime soon. And we'll dig into it in a second. I'll go into some of the limitations of LLMs and, and, and why that is. But in general, you know, this starts off at zero. So again, go back some point in time where AI had no coding skills at all. Um, and it comes up to catch up to humans. And it's unclear if it will really exceed humans. Um, I think it will in some vectors. Like I said, I think that uh, there's some like some of those tests out there, some of like the kind of more memorizing type of things and the more already well solved um, and very repetitive type of things um, or very, things that are like very formulaic but com complex that are like regex or something. It's been really good at writing regex statements, regular expressions, which can look really funky um, and are, can be confusing to a human. But it's just like pattern recognition. Uh, AI is really good at that. But over time, it just it's, it doesn't mean that the human skills goes to zero. Like that's no, the value of that is not gonna go down. In fact, what I would argue is, especially with all these people, AI will replace coders, you know, or, you know, there's no need for to, to all, all this, this really big push to discourage young people and people and anybody from learning coding is going to make the value of coding skills that much higher because there will be less people learning how to, how to code and understanding how computers work in a world where computers are taking over. It, it, the, it blows my mind that people are believing that that is going to be a less valuable skill um, it, because it just is. It's like saying, uh, you know, a lot of people don't code in assembly, but I still think that somebody who knows assembly, man, that person can do a lot with computers. They could pick up any, any language and I bet they could, uh, you know, just code really, really well because that's really, really challenging. And so set, laying that foundation for understanding, even if they don't actually use assembly, that understanding of assembly is incredibly valuable. So uh, I think this is a, a, a bit uh, a bit useful. So as I talked about, um, there are limitations for LLMs, um, and they're good at already solved and simple things. Uh, this is just the, they they have a lot of trouble going more than a few steps outside of their training set. Essentially, they can create new recipes with the ingredients they already have, but they can't create new ingredients. This is really, really important that I don't see anybody else talking about, but that is critical to understanding why there will be limitations with the current technology. Um, and, and a lot of these examples where they're using test time compute to get it better, what they're doing is they're actually uh, narrowing the scope and finding the things within their training set that are better, that, that solve these problems better be, and, and the, the better um, reasoning parts of their training set. So essentially they're, they're they're scoping down the training set. Um, but they're, it's, they're really bad at solving new and complex things. Uh, there's not a lot of data in its training set on how to use LLMs within, with, uh, within software. And this is actually a really valuable and important thing that needs to be done. And right now there's no indications that they're gonna be really good at that and understanding how to build those new things that, ha that, are, that kind of go into a whole new area. Um, and what often happens, and again, don't get me wrong, like I use cursor and I'll even show it in, in my next video uh, when I talk about uh, tools and an agent that I've, I'll show the code I built in an agent. Uh, cursor is really useful, but I, I lean on it more for the so already solved and kind of just simple things. But, and sometimes even if it's like complex, but it's, again, it's just, I, I can intuitively know that there's a lot of stuff, millions of people have done this or thousands of people at least. But then when it comes to creating something really new, I have to either guide it a lot more um, or code it uh, myself. 
Because what it often, often happens is it paints itself into a bug corner, it hallucinates a bug, and then it hallucinates a solution to the bug and built and amplifies the bugs from there. That is a very common thing that will probably be true for quite some time. Now, there are some things that it's good at, and it can find bugs and fix things, and, and it does a pretty good job, and mostly I'm using uh, Sonnet 3.5. So assuming that the O3 stuff works out and they can drive down the cost, um, and they're not just faking a lot of the stuff, then that's great. I think that's going to help, but it's going to help do these things better. And it doesn't really solve these things that much more. Maybe it gets a little bit better at some of the complex things, um, but definitely like creating new stuff, you're going to need a human right now. Um, and you believe it or not, and I still get a lot of pushback on this, despite the just glaringly obvious data um, that model improvements have significantly slowed down. Uh, using test time compute is not, uh, is largely not improving the model. It's improving, it's creating a process around it, creating essentially AI powered software using um, a process and not just the model. Yes, they've trained the model to kind of integrate into the process, but there's more to it than that. Um, and the models themselves have not improved because it's basically a, a, a GPT-4 version that they've fine tuned. Um, and if you look at the, the speed with which they went from two to three, GPT-2 to three, like how much improvements that was, and then from three to four, and you compare that to, to where we're at now with the model and not necessarily just the process, um, then it's definitely slowed down. And this is something that the honest people are, are, are willing to acknowledge. One of those people it turns out to be this guy, Mark Zuckerberg, who would have thought, you know, somebody who was, you know, largely kind of hated and vilified in a lot of ways and seen as like a total asshole. Um, but he's telling the truth. If you watch this, this podcast or, you know, watch a few more minutes into it and you can hear his words and you watch him in other places. First of all, he's post-economic. He doesn't really seem to care as much about making money. I think he just wants to do cool shit. Um, and, but also, I think that his company is in a great position to where it doesn't really matter what happens with AI. If if it turns out to be all hype, you know, I don't think that's true, but if it turns out to be all hype, Meta is fine. Uh, but if it turns out to be awesome, Meta is also fine in a great position. In fact, they're kind of spoiling. <laughs> they're the spoiler of a lot of these like OpenAI and Anthropic, he might be just double dicking them really hard by releasing these open source models because um, as the models get better, the amount of use cases they cover increases. And you want to, you don't want to use the best model you can for a use case. You actually want to use this, the, the worst model, the, le the least expensive, the fastest model you can, you can get away with. And so as the models, let's assume that they continue to improve, which I think they will just not at the same pace that they were improving before, then the, the open source models will cover more and more of the use cases. And where, where does that leave these premier model companies with the smaller and smaller set of use cases? Um, and he's not trying to sell us models. He's kind of like already got billions of people on his platforms. What, what does he care? He's giving the most unbiased opinion right now, despite the fact that it's getting already misinterpreted when it's super clear what he's saying. So uh, I, I think if, if there's anybody to follow, you know, I've, t I've talked shit about like um, the NVIDIA, the Salesforce guy, Sam Altman, um, uh, Microsoft and all, all of them on their stuff because they're all pushing something. They have an agenda, a money agenda. He doesn't give a fuck. Zuck, Zuck doesn't give a fuck. All right, and he he's he's calling it like it is, and like he sees it. And he's also you can tell in the way he the language he talks about. He's even kind of like leaving the room for like I don't really know for sure, but this is how I see it, which is the mark of somebody who is actually looking at it in, with intellectual honesty. So here's the conclusion. So first of all, there's major clickbait, investor bait, and sales bait equals massive overhype. There's a lot of vested interest in promoting this idea that AI is going to code for you. Um, it, this works in the interests of NVIDIA and, and in the interest of like companies like Salesforce and, and OpenAI and, 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 all, and even Microsoft. And, and it's all circling around in this massive overhype because it, it triggers a, like a, a fear thing in our brain. They took our jibs! It's kind of what it's, it's getting people to be worried about. And Mark talks about how like in every single case with new technology, they've always had people think they took our, they're going to take our jabs and it's never happened. And he's like, well, maybe it'll happen with this one, but probably not. Um, so he's one of the few people being honest. So I, I would recommend following him and, and ignoring most of the other uh, kind of hype people out there. I think it is incredibly unlikely that coding is dead as a skill set. 
The, uh, in fact, I think it is more important and will become more important and it is more valuable today and will be more valuable in the future. Do not believe these people that think coding is dead. The AI can do some cool stuff in coding. Can it do everything? No. Will it be able to do everything in, in, in near future? No. Will it be good at certain things and get better? Yes. Does that eliminate the need for humans? No. But here, here's what it really comes down to for me. The value of understanding how computers work will always be valuable no matter what. And that value will increase over time as computers continually to take over more and more of our economy and our world. There, there, there will always be value there. Like the my understanding of C and having coded in C, even though I don't ever code in C anymore, is useful and has helped me. All the thirty plus languages that I've learned to code code in, even though I own, I code in all but really one of them right now, is helping me. It is helping me understand how to code better in the main language I code in now, which is Python. So the idea that you're gonna <laughs> coding is dead and don't learn this as a skill set and you're just going to be able to like put in English and it's going to do all this stuff. I just don't believe that stuff. And, you know, believe it until you see it. And, and even if you see it, you, some of these people, are, they're really good at twisting the words to mean what gives them the most uh, bait, you know, whichever one of these baits they're going for. So let me know if you disagree in the comments uh, or agree. I'm happy to have a discussion with you. If you see some data to the, to the contrary of what I, what I'm seeing here, but, uh, Please, 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 uh, if, if somebody could kind of flip the script on this, and, uh, and I think I see a few people out there who are kind of giving pushback on this idea, um, because I think it's actually harming um, our future. We need more coders, not less. Um, and so anyway, let me know what you think. If you like this video or still with me, please like and subscribe for more awesome videos like this. And um, I hope to see you on the next one where I'm going to show you an actual agent that I built that is pretty unique. And the way that I went about building it is I haven't seen anybody else build it like that. That is a, a superior way and to the versus doing tools along with a little bit more, uh, I think a superior way of building agents. So um, let me know what you think. Have a great day. Bye.